You're sinking it. If it pleases the court, counsel for the government, counsel for the co-defendant, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Seven years. Seven years in Florida State Prison. That's what Luis Rivera got in exchange for his participation in a first-degree murder case. And who gave him a seven-year deal offer? The prosecution. So you have to think and you have to ask yourself, what did the prosecution get in return for the deal of the century? What did the prosecution get for giving a defendant with an extremely long criminal history, including a recent federal conviction for racketeering as a Latin king? What did he give? Did he give the information of a mob boss or a drug kingpin, a foreign or domestic terrorist, a hiding school shooter? No. He gave up Secreto Garcia. And why does that matter? Why does what he gave up matter? Why does Luis Rivera's information in this case matter? Because as it's clear from the government's opening statement, their focus in this case is on the Adelsons. Donna Adelson, Charlie Adelson, Wendy Adelson, that's who their real targets are. And so what do they do? They go after the low-hanging fruit. They go to Luis Rivera, who was charged with first-degree murder and subject to the death penalty. And they tell him, we're going to cut you a deal where you only have to serve seven more years. Seven. So what does he do? He sits with his lawyer, Chuck Collins. And you're going you're gonna to see a tape. You're going to see an interview that the government's going to play where law enforcement officers are sitting at a table with Luis Rivera and his attorney, Chuck Collins. And it's going to be considered his initial statement, okay? And they're going to ask him things back and forth. And you'll see that Luis Rivera gives a statement that, in essence, becomes, and he becomes the prosecution's parent. He says pretty much everything that coincides with their strategy, with their theory of the case. What they don't tell you and what they don't show you is that before the video camera turns on, law enforcement is in one room, Luis Rivera and Chuck Collins are in another. And the detectives go not to Luis Rivera, but to Chuck Collins to exchange questions, to prepare Luis Rivera for when the lights turn on to make sure that your story fits, that your story is in unison with what the government wants you to say. They don't show you that, but you're going to hear about it because the testimony is what it is. And the testimony is that the government spoon-fed Luis Rivera as to what his testimony has to be. Now, why does that matter? Well, let's talk about some of the things that the government said in their opening and what they believe that the evidence is going to show. They talked about an initial trip where Luis Rivera says that him and Secreto Garcia traveled from Tallahassee I'm sorry, from Miami to Tallahassee to scope out the scene or to commit murder or whatever their, their argument was. And the reason why Luis Rivera has to say this is because there's cell tower records that show that he traveled from Miami to Tallahassee a month before the murder. <clears throat> there's no such records for Secreto Garcia. You won't hear one thing. You won't see one piece of data that shows Secreto Garcia traveled from Miami to Tallahassee during that first purported trip. And if you don't think that's good enough, there's more. During that first trip up, Luis Rivera, who was driving, who rented his car, he gets pulled over by a Florida Highway Patrol officer, officer Trooper Downing. And Trooper Downey testified, and you'll hear in his, that, that his testimony is that when he issued the citation, that Luis Rivera was alone. Alone in the car. 
And he knows that because he indicated it on the citation. The government has hitched their wagon to Louis Rivera. That's this case, OK? There's going to be speculation and an additional theory of, of why uh, the, the, the Adelsons wanted to, ha to hurt uh, Dan Markell. That's an, that's an additional case. This case, Sigfredo's case, is premised around Louis Rivera. And I'll tell you why. Because the only person that can put Sigfredo Garcia at the scene, the only person who can tell you that Sigfredo Garcia got out of the car and purportedly shot Dan Markell is who? <clears throat> it's the guy who got the seven years. The guy who got the deal of a lifetime. It's him. That's their case. You will hear statement after statement after statement from Luis Rivera who adds and subtracts and changes and alters his testimony from A to Z, I mean, it's crazy how much he changes his story. He tells the government, which they're going to tell you, you know, we got 100 grand for this murder. And uh, for driving up to Tallahassee, you know what I got as the driver? I got 35 grand. So wait a minute, let me get this straight. Supposedly, Sigfredo Garcia was hired and given 100,000 bucks. And he decided, because he's such a wealthy guy, to bring you in, to do nothing other than drive you up to Tallahassee twice for 35 grand? You know, two and two has to equal four, okay? Luis Rivera also wants you to believe that Katie Magbanoa was uh, solicited by Charlie Adelson, okay? Now, the evidence is gonna show that my client has children with Ms. Magbanoa. He loves her, that's his girlfriend, that's his, that's his that's his wifey. But they were going through a rough patch. Do you know who she was dating? She was dating Charlie Adels. They want you to believe, and the evidence will show from the government's own witnesses, that Sequeto Garcia was in love with Katie, and he was not happy, not one bit, that this dental playboy that drives around in a Ferrari with nice hair and big muscles and a long, long wallet was with his wifey. They want you to believe that this man whose heart was broken decided, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and help out the guy that's with my wife. <clears throat> and the evidence is gonna show Charlie Adelson's, he's no numbskull. He's got degree after degree, very highly educated. Who do you think, the evidence is going to show that Charlie Edelson's a smart guy. Charlie Edelson knew Sigfredo didn't like him. Charlie Edelson also knew that, that crossing, you know, uh, when you make that decision, if you're going to solicit somebody, if you have the option of Luis Rivera, the primero of the Latin Kings. Primero Latin Kings means you're the head of the Latin Kings. If you're five foot four and you're the head of a gang organization, what does that mean? That means you're a bad dude. You don't get to become the head of a gang at five foot four if you don't prove yourself as a gang member. And he's not like, it's not like a fairy tale gang. This is an international organization known for its involvement in criminal acts from robbery, homicide, drug dealing, kidnapping, you name it. And, the, and, what, and how do I prove that? Uh, uh, Luis Rivera was in, in this criminal organization, other than he's going to have to admit it, he was serving a federal sentence for racketeering for 12 years by the United States Department of Justice. And on that indictment, you will see that he had a network of Latin kings throughout the state of Florida. From Key West up to the Panhandle, they're Latin kings. And as the primero, which means a leader of the Latin kings, he had access to other Latin kings. So if he wanted to go up to Tallahassee to commit a murder, you think he would take a gun? No, because he'd be, he's a convicted felon. He'd be riding dirty. That means he'd be riding with a gun. No, what does he do? Picks up the phone, and he calls one of his brothers up north. That makes sense. That's what the head of a criminal organization would do. This is not a street-level thug. This is the primero of the Latin kings. 
And so Luis Rivera, a known drug dealer, a known supplier of, I, I mean, he is a pharmacy from soup to nuts, from steroids to cocaine. He, produ- he, he supplies it. And it's our position that he has a relationship with Charlie Edelson. It's our position that he was the drug supplier for Charlie Edelson. And Charlie Edelson made a decision to instill and to solicit this murder for hire from Luis Rivera. And do you think Luis Rivera, I mean, he took the 100 grand, but do you think he's going to tell his buddy Sigfredo, hey, I'm going to help out the guy that's sleeping with your wife? The Latin kings have a code of silence. He'll tell you about it. It's known. The Latin kings are an organization that they're known to keep their mouths shut. It is in their Bible. There's been specials on HBO about it. And so Charlie Adelson, who's an educated man, instills the services of a known gang leader. Not Sixfredo Garcia. But who's going to tell you otherwise? Well, let's see. The guy looking at the death penalty that the government offered in seven years. You're going to hear discrepancy after discrepancy. You're going to hear problematic evidence with uh, with Luis Rivera about Sigfredo Garcia's involvement. And you're going to hear over and over and over that Luis Rivera's story fits the government's theory. Because the target at the end of this case is not these two. When when Luis Rivera started cooperating in October of 2016, the government as well as everybody else believed that they would be the next to crumble to get to the to 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 get to the AOC. That's what everybody thought. But yet here we are. They've maintained their innocence, and we're here in trial. We ask you guys to keep an open mind. Okay. We ask you guys to evaluate the evidence. The government said in an opening statement that there is a picture of the Prius that shows two people in it. Don't listen to them. Make your own decision. Our position is that Secreto Garcia and Luis Rivera were up in Tallahassee. We will admit to that. But they were there for one of many drug deals that they were involved in because Luis Rivera is a drug dealer. And he brings along Secreto Garcia time and time again. We will submit to you that Luis Rivera is the shooter in this case. We will submit to you that he instilled the services of his organization to supply the gun and to supply another henchman in this case. And remember, the only person that can put my client in that car, the only person that puts the gun in my client's purported hand, The only person that says Sigfredo Garcia went and killed Dan Markell is who? It's Luis Rivera. We're going to take a break. Just a second. Uh, Let me make one comment. I know you all see the attorneys with coffee cups on their table, but just to let you know that everything's fair in here. I drink water, they drink water, you drink water. Nobody's in here with coffee and they're under strict orders not to bring coffee in here. So I don't want y'all to think they're sitting there drinking coffee. Uh, I have a water only rule just because we have so many people coming and going and we don't have much assistance cleaning up. We get coffee all over. We got a big mess. So anyway, uh, we'll take 10 minutes, let you step out with the bailiff. Either side need anything. All right, we'll take 10 minutes. Just leave your notes where they are.